football game and y'all can't cheer in the house of the Lord. I ain't have to worry about my team. 4821. You're 7 and 0, that's all I'm saying. They ain't play nobody. Okay. Alright. We'll see. Alright. Praise the Lord. God is good, amen. I just want to say, Pastor, and just thank God for you. Uh, I shared a couple of Wednesdays ago uh, that I appreciate all the training you have given us as associate ministers uh, for sharing the pulpit, for teaching us how to, even when we didn't feel like we could do it. Uh, I think the only lesson we didn't like was when you took us to the funeral home uh, and brought us all in the back to see everything. Not all the ministers went back then. But I just thank God for you, uh, for seeing the anointing in our lives, for licensing so many of us, for having us ordained, that whenever the Lord calls us to do something out in the kingdom, you have allowed God to equip us and have given us training here at Free Will. And we just thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I see that there's some empty seats in the house. Maybe they already gone to the Magic City Classic. It's not till next week I heard, but maybe they already tailgating or finding a spot. I don't know. But I pray that y'all that are going, that you'll come back to church on Sunday. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Pray with me, Lord. The Holy Ghost changed the, the sermon just when I thought I had it together. Uh, he just flipped everything around. Amen? Amen. But I also want to share, when we were singing those praise and worship songs, I saw the room spin around. It's as God was moving stuff from one place to another. He was moving things out of our way as we were worshiping God and letting him minister to our hearts. Amen? Amen. I want you to know there was a shift in the atmosphere. That where you were before we started singing, before church got started, when we had the worship team, when we had the men singing, when we had the praise team singing, there was a shift in the atmosphere. And some situations have changed. Some things that you were burning with, God has shifted to another place. Glory to your name, God. Oh, praise your Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. You just continue to do what you've been doing in this place. Amen? Go with me to John chapter 6. It's familiar scripture, amen? John chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 1. Now we're reading from the New International Version. Are you there, church? Yeah. If not, say hold up. All right, somebody say hold up. We're going to John chapter 6, starting at the first verse. I'll be reading a little bit, amen? John chapter 6, starting at the first verse. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sea. 
Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy the bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did, this, did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. Final verse. So they gathered, uh, them, they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. And as soon as I say this title, some folk are going to get the wrong impression. Uh, but I promise before you leave, the Holy Ghost will make it plain about what he's talking about. Amen? He simply gave me this word, under the influence. Under the influence. And I know that we didn't come out of our mother's womb, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We lived a worldly life, and we were under the influence of a lot of things, a lot of places that we went to, a lot of folks that we hung out with, the things that we did, and the things that we said. And parents, you have to know that your parenting skills is not the only influence in the lives of your children. Sometimes they come home and say things and you wonder, where did you get that from? Because we don't talk like that in this house. And they might tell you, well, I heard Bobby say it, or I heard Susie say it. Well, five-year-olds and six-year-olds, some things they should know. Some things they shouldn't be saying. But somebody influenced them with something they say. And the children pick it up without even knowing what they mean. Come back and say it again. I remember when I was a child in my neighborhood 50 years ago, you could let your children play outside and just tell them stay on the sidewalk and don't cross the street. So I was riding my tricycle up and down the street and I hit a bump and I fell over the handlebars and I began to cry and the little girl that was sitting on her porch called me the N-word. I didn't know what it meant, but I knew it was insulting. Because the influence in which she said it meant that it was something derogatory towards me. And I went home to Mama to tell her what this little girl had said to me. And Mama didn't tell me the meaning of it. She just told me that I was not that. I learned later what it meant. But I still had the voice of my mother in my head to influence me to know I wasn't that. And so we have influence over our children. We have influence on our jobs. We have influence in the church. We have influence in the gossip. Oh. We have influence in the gossip groups that say stuff that shouldn't be said talking about folks that we shouldn't be talking about, thinking that we somebody that we not. If it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, yeah. 
under the influence. And I know in my day, I was under a lot of different influences. And what I found out from the Lord is that there were a lot of different spirits because I was into a lot of different stuff. I didn't have no problem stealing because the spirit of thievery was right there to help me along. I didn't have no problem lying because the spirit of lying was there to influence me. And so when we're under the influence of this world, we'll do things like this world. But when we come into the kingdom of God, I said, when we come into the kingdom of God, there ought to be a different kind of influence that we're under. And anytime you're under something, that means something is over your head. Thank God I ain't sleeping under the bridge. That that's not the roof over my head. When I lay down in my bed, there's a roof to keep the rain off my head. I thank God for his word covering me to influence my steps. But when we look at the text, and we're always looking at the miracle of what Jesus did for the 5,000, but I also want to talk about the ones that are getting in the way of your influence. So when Jesus asked the question, he asked Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? And he only asked this to test him because he already had in mind what he was going to do. Jesus was under the fluence of heaven. He already knew that he had the miracle inside to change the situation. All Philip had right at that moment was a vision of how difficult it was in front. So all he could give as an answer was we were going to have to come up with eight months worth of wages in order to solve the situation. But Jesus said, Watch the Lord's 
world. But all that I've been through was for the making of me. So that my God can say that why you're undermining fluids. I can do something about your situation. I can make you whole and I can make you complete. And I can do for you what you can't do for yourself. All the education in the world won't bring healing to your body. When the doctor says nothing else I can do for mama, nothing else I can do for you, you have to know how to call on Dr. Jesus and say, I'm going to let him influence me. Huh. I want you, Lord, to influence me. And so Jesus didn't let some folks get in his way. Some folks you just got to get rid of. Some folks you just got to get rid of because they're the wrong influence. I can hang with my family. I love them dearly. But it's a length of time that I can roll with them. Bringing the man of God twenty loaves 
of barley bread, baked from the first ripe grain, along with some heads of new grain. Give it to the people, Elijah said. How can I set this before a hundred men? His servant asked. But Elijah answered, Give it to the people to eat. For this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some left over. Then he said it before them, they ate and had some left over according to the word of God. Now that was a feeding of a hundred. Maybe two, they didn't say the women and children were there. But because of the word of God, the prophet said, put the food out in front of them. They're going to eat all they want and they're going to have some left over just because the word of the Lord says so. Now he's saying the word of the Lord says so. But when you go back and look at the 5,000, the word was manifest in flesh. And he didn't just have to say so, he already had it as a thought. Oh, y'all missed that connection. The prophet was 